welcome to the Brock Interview Series with host Thomas S. Orwatt Jr. Welcome to episode number 82 of the Rock Interview Series. I'm Thomas Orwatt Jr. It is September 16th, 2023. And for this feature, I have Carl Dixon, guitarist, vocalist, and Andy Curran, bassist, vocalist of the Canadian hard rock band Coney Hatch, as my guests. During this interview, Carl and Andy talk about their two new studio tracks from their recently released live record, Postcards from Germany Live, their upcoming concert opening for Kim Mitchell in North Tonawanda, New York, and much, much more. So let's get started. Here they are, Carl Dixon and Andy Curran. Before we get started, please subscribe to the Rock Interview Series. Hey everyone, welcome to the Rock Interview Series. We have a great special here today. We have Andy and Carl of Coney Hatch with us today. And we're going to be talking about their uh, new record that they just put out, the live record, Postcard from Germany Live. And they're also playing a concert um, here in the Buffalo, New York area next Saturday, the 23rd of September at the Riviera Theater in North Tonawanda. First of all, guys, thank you very much for being our guest here. And uh, congratulations on the new record. And we're really looking forward to this concert next uh, Saturday with Kim Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's nice to be here. We're looking forward to it as well. Yeah, let's uh, start off by um, talking a little bit about uh, this concert that's coming up. This is the first time you're playing in uh, in the U.S. In, in quite a while, isn't it? Yeah, since, uh, what was it, Andy? The last time we did the, uh, the Summer Sizzler at Terry's Corners, and we were in Pittsburgh the night before that. Terry's <laughs> That was 90. Corner. What was that, like late 80s? No, so... 90 five or six for some reason we took on a little just excursion to go to the states i can't remember even why it came up but yeah i think it was 95 or 96. why yeah. so long i mean buffalo is like your second home why have you deprived us of playing in buffalo so long i know carl you play here all the time but why hasn't coney hatch played here because andy hates you <laughs> no that's not true no, andy's too I, nice I, to hate anyone no you know what <laughs> I, I've been over for so many hockey games. I'd love coming to uh, see the Sabres play. And, and um, Carl knows this. I'm a diehard Blackhawk fan. So any excuse to see the Blackhawks and, and come watch any games and, and made friends with some uh, some of the guys who work for the Sabres. So I've been across many times uh, eating at Frank and Teresa's for chicken wings and um, and visiting friends, but but no gigs. So honestly, and not not blowing smoke your way. We're we're super excited to be back because Buffalo was. I was telling them prior to going on air, Carl, that Buffalo was kind of like one of our second homes. We were always oh, yeah. there. I lost I lost track of how many times we used to play. Um, you know, the salty dog and uh, what was it called? Round one or stage one? Stage There's one, stage rooftops, one, yeah. the Tralfamador, Tralfamador and the odd as well. We were in there. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, re the real reason that we haven't been there so long is I would have to put it down to a shortage of invitations. <laughs> well, you have yeah, come on, invite us. Invite us. Open not, invitation. Not play, but... play Buffalo every, become a, become a local band here. Play every weekend. I mean, I would, that's, that's your open invitation. A residency. <laughs> I like yes. that idea. A Buffalo yes. residency. There you go. Yeah. Well, I want, I want to, um, I'm really excited about the show. Like I said before, uh, you guys are uh, opening with Kim Mitchell and uh, what's it like uh, playing with Kim again? And, uh, you know, for, for the viewers watching this uh, that don't already know, Kim Mitchell uh, produced your uh, debut record. Yes. Uh... Yes. He, yes. He, his story. I'll jump in. Yeah. I'll jump in about the history and Carl, you can, you can take what you can maybe take the other half about what, it, what it's like playing with Kim. Cause we got a chance to do that a while back, but no, the, the, the relationship with Kim goes back to the early eighties. Um, he, we consider him our mentor, one of our best friends. He, I, I think without Kim, we probably wouldn't even be talking to you today. He took us under his wings produced our first demo which got us our record deal and it's a friendship that's lasted all these years since the 80s so you know just the friendship alone thomas is 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 so so great that you know the opportunity to play shows with kim is exciting but i'll let carl talk about some of the ones that we have played with him in the past yeah well not only did he get us a record deal he produced the first album and boy what an education that was he was just so knowledgeable about everything to do with re recording 
techniques and preparing your instruments and your amps for the recording process, um, having creating a fun vibe to so you get the best results and you're not all uptight and tense in there. He was, you know, it's just like having uh, an older brother who loves you, <laughs> who wants you to succeed, <laughs> take you into the studio for your first project. And yeah. uh, we, we've done uh, many shows with Kim over the years, although as uh, we went for a long period of not really playing with anybody for a while, there was a gap there. We had a show with Kim in Burlington in 2014, yeah. 2014. And boy, was that fun to be back with him and the guys. Um, Peter Fredette's always been there since we first uh, got to know Kim back in 82, uh, 81, 82 was when Peter Fredette started being part of Kim's world, I guess. And uh, the, it's just a happy vibe, you know, it, it just a reunion of, wow, this is so great. We're all still doing this. We all still sound great. And look at us. Wow, here we are. So it's going to be so much fun to be sharing the Riviera show with that that last show that we did with uh, with Kim, uh, Carl, you might remember that um, Dave Ketchum, uh, our drummer, and I, we swung a deal <laughs> with Kim with Kim's guitar tech, and we said, "Look, at on Kim's next uh, guitar change, we're going to bring him out his guitar." And 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 he was like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." And I got, we got a little towel, and then Kim reached over to his guitar tech for to get the guitar changed. Dave Ketchum and I came out. We we patted down his face with the towel and handed him his guitar, and he was like looking at us like, "What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, it, it's it's like a little family, so uh, it'll be good to see him again. We spoke a couple weeks ago, and he's psyched about us being uh, sharing the stage with him too. So it'll be cool. Since the show sold out so quickly, was there ever thoughts about bringing on a second show? Yes, there was. I was. Uh very involved with uh, David Fillinworth, the uh, the general manager, or the executive director, I guess is his real title, of the Riviera. He was really into the idea. And then we were looking at, can we do it on Friday? No tribute acts or, you know, their tradition is Friday tributes. Okay, what about Sunday? Well, it'll depend what the NFL schedule says, <laughs> because if the Bills are playing on Sunday, nobody will come to the second show in Buffalo. Yes. You, uh, you don't we, want to go up against the Buffalo Bills, do you, Carl? We can't, no, the Bills we're gonna lose that town, badly. Yeah. as they should, you know, but uh, I hear they're off to a bit of a dodgy start. Let's hope they get their act together. Oh, they will. They will win uh, tomorrow. I guarantee it. And <laughs> Can I run to my bookie with that? <laughs> I, I also guarantee the Super Bowl victories the last three years. Too. I was going to say, should we go to the Super Bowl? The Bills are going to take it. But no, listen, we would have loved to um, play the second show, but there was no way that anybody was interested in going up head to head with the Buffalo Bills. So as Carl said, it'd be great. Maybe it sets us up for a return performance with Kim down the line. Yeah, yeah, that would be absolutely um amazing to see you guys again, maybe even this year. Uh, I want to talk about the two new studio tracks that you guys uh, recorded for the uh, new live record that you uh, recently put out on August 11th uh, called Postcards from Germany Live. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about, I mean, both songs are amazing. Uh, the first one was um, It's About a Girl, which is a really catchy pop song, I, I, I feel, and, and a song that definitely deserves some radio airplay. Uh, tell, tell us, tell my audience a little bit about that particular song. Well, you're right. In a perfect world, that probably would be a, a released as a single for us. Um, maybe, you know, it, its best time would have been in the 80s. I don't know when they were still playing that that kind of new release on the radio. Uh, we uh, were finishing up our four album, <clears throat> the, our last studio album that came out in 2013, and we had some extra time. So we laid down a couple of bed tracks just, in, you know, to have something in the bank for going back to. And they sat there for a while, and it's about a girl that had the idea for years about that that chorus, the thought that um, there's so many things that that men in particular, or or let's say even women who love women, but or even for our mothers, our sisters, every, so many things that we do in this world are about trying to impress a girl, and we'll jump through ridiculous hoops and twist ourselves in knots to in the hope that a girl will like us or be impressed. So. I'd had that idea for a few years, but I could never get the lyrics right. And it sat there and sat there. And then we were putting together uh, this album and we thought, well, why don't we add studio tracks to it? 
and we, we had these two that we could finish, uh, the one that Andy sang as well. So finally, um, with the, pre the gun to my head, I realized, okay, I'd better produce those lyrics that I could never work out. And it's amazing what, what pressure does to focus your thoughts. <laughs> my, dad, my dad had a great saying, there's, uh, there's nothing that sharpens the intellect so much as the knowledge that one is to be hanged in the morning. So <laughs> I, I take that often to, to heart when it's time to, to buckle down and get her done. And we had such a, a good time working on the new tracks together. And Andy, uh, I, just, uh, I just love having him as the producer because he knows what I can do. And he pushes me and he says, yeah, that, that part you just did there, mm, don't think that works as well. What if you try, you know, some guys who go, no, again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, having my buddy as the producer was, a, was a, just a lovely thing. Yeah, and, and then the other track is... Uh, Thanks for saying it. Heaven's on the Other Side, another really great song, um, well-written. Uh, tell us a little bit about that particular track. Well, it's kind of funny because Carl and I were, when you know, the two of us were really quite a good duo in the studio, bouncing ideas off each other. And I jokingly said to Carl, you know, it's been a long time since we've done a song about the devil like we're way <laughs> overdue to sing about the devil right and you know we think about devil, <laughs> yeah we think about devil's deck and fallen angel and um you know and, and so i jokingly said i've got some lyrics about the devil but in full transparency um the the the, the spirit of the song is um Carl, Carl didn't mention this, but we actually recorded those those tracks over COVID, and uh, during when the pandemic hit, and and so we were, I was very much thinking that you know we're we're in a bit of a hell right now, the the whole world, but actually let's keep focused because nine times out of ten, when you go through a, a really bad chapter right around the corner is a, a rainbow, and the the sentiment of this song is if, if you're going through a hell ride, walk straight through it, keep your chin up, face forward, and on the other side, heaven's waiting for you. So it, it is as jokingly as the, the lyrics are. And we borrowed, I borrowed a few things from Mick Jagger and switched them around a little bit, so transparency. <laughs> but um, it, it's very much a positive song, despite its uh, references to Satan and hell. Thought about that. There has been some devil-related songs in the Coney Hatch catalog over the years. Yes, Devil's Deck being like the first song that I really remember getting into um, from that first record, and of course, Monkey Bars and uh, two two great songs. Is there plans to release a new studio, a full studio record, anytime soon? I think there's an intention. We don't have the plan quite worked out yet. <laughs> It's well, a hot a, topic. There's an idea. It's a hot topic. <laughs> yeah, it's a hot topic whenever we meet at airports and, and bus stations along the way. Where, you know, and, and Sean Kelly, our, we've got a new member in the band. Um, well, not so new, but um, he we consider him the young guy. And my God, he's he's all over Carl and I on a, on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. When are we going into the studio? Let's write some new tracks. And everybody's getting along really well. So, yeah, I think it's on the to-do list, isn't it, Carl? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, guys, I want to thank you very much for your time. And I'm uh, really looking forward to the show on Saturday. Uh, Coney Hatch will be playing with Kim Mitchell at the Riviera Theater in North Tonawanda. And uh, unfortunately, if you don't have your tickets, uh, you're out of luck because it's sold out like really quick. <laughs> if it's if it's a nice night, stand outside by the back door. <laughs> You'll hear it fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll open it up a crack a little bit so you can hear it. <laughs> That, that's very, very kind of you guys. Um, Again, thank you for your time and uh, best of luck. And uh, I, hopefully I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, Thomas.